Hello and welcome to your printmaking unit. It's a two-week unit um, where we will make what's called relief prints. Let's get started. Printmaking has been used as a form of communication dating back into prehistoric times. It has shaped cultures, like it says, it's, it's been used as a form of communication and is now valued for um, its artistic possibilities and for technical qualities. Okay, like I said, re rooted in prehistoric times. How so? Well, look at this. Humans in 15,000 BC in the caves of Lascaux, France, or even earlier in the caves of Altamira, Spain, they placed their hands on the cave walls and blew pigment coloration over top of them, creating, in effect, a stencil over and over and over again. They're really the first prints. As early as 500 BC, Sumerians carved images on cylinder seals, as you can see here on the left, and then they rolled those cylinders into clay, creating a low relief, creating a print. Chinese scholars, as early as 200 AD, they found that printing could occur on paper and silk. The development of paper really enabled printmaking to take off. It was economical. Um, it was well suited to accept matrices for prints. And the technology became more and more progressive as prints became more widespread throughout not only the Orient, but also Western Europe. Printmaking flourished as a form of communication because there could be multiple images made from a, a single matrix or plate. There were Buddhist manuscripts, the Gutenberg's printed Bible was able to be produced economically, and Christian images became common to the people. You did not have to be nobility in order to um, commission a painting or a sculpture because even if you were of a lower class you could afford to buy prints. From the Renaissance on, on individuals in the arts began to be recognized as printmaking masters. Okay? The processes became more and more complex until the 19th, 20th, 21st centuries, even today, print shops are um, in a, an abundance with master printers, people who know their paper, their processes, their inks inside and out. Artists go to these print shops to have their work created. So what is a print? Well, a couple, couple characteristics that make it different from painting or sculpture. Prints are identical images, the exact same thing in many, many copies. Okay? It's made by transferring the initial idea or image to a matrix. A matrix is the block of wood or uh, linoleum or, in our case, uh, a foam plate. Prints are produced in limited editions for a reason. Okay, limited editions, as you see their characteristics here, signed, numbered, hand printed, collectible, and valuable. Okay, um, if it's not a limited edition, it's not that valuable. Think of your daily newspaper, right? That's all done with a printing plate, but it's not, um, or at least used to be, <laughs> but it's not um, valuable because it's not a signed numbered edition. Artist prints are different because there is a finite number created by the artist's hand and they are all signed by that artist. What kind of prints are there? Well, for our purposes, we're going to talk about uh, just one, but I want you to know about these other ones. Intaglio, lithography, screen printing, okay? And like I said, we're going to be doing relief prints from foam. Intaglio. It's made by, think about uh, scraffito, where you scratch, okay? Another Italian word, intaglio. It's made by scratching um, your image into a copper or zinc plate that is coated with tar or some kind of bitumen. Then you draw in it with a needle point tool, okay? Um, you bite it with acid. You put it in an acid bath. I'll show you in this next slide. And then you ink it 
run it through a, a really heavy press with damp paper. This paper is forced into the, the little ink valleys. So you're, you are actually printing what you carve as opposed to relief processes where you are printing what has not been carved. Okay, so it's totally different. Here's the, uh, oh, I must have taken that slide out with the acid bath. Okay, just so you know, you're well aware of the different kinds of printmaking that there are. And you see, what kind of qualities can you get with intaglio? You see, this, this al it's almost like a drawing, right? Um, with this hatching and cross-hatching. You see the, the cross-hatching here on the right. Look at the beautiful value scale used by Rembrandt in the man sitting by the window okay the beauty is though that you can have many many copies unlike a drawing where you get how many one okay you can have many many copies of these images lithography I did this once when I was back in art school here it's this really big stone that you draw on with a, uh, a waxy crayon. There's a whole process of drawing and then um, coating it with certain chemicals, wiping it down with water, and then when you ink the stone here, the ink is attracted by the waxy crayon and resisted by the areas that don't have the crayon so that you get kind of it looks like a, a crayon drawing doesn't it or at least a charcoal drawing okay see the whetstone resists the ink the oil based ink you again you run this through a press with damp paper and you get um, these lithographs okay to Colwitz doesn't it look like a, a crayon drawing Okay, screen printing. All right, it's also called silk screening or serigraph. It's used for um, all these T-shirts that you see. Okay, um, you, they're made with commercial screen printing processes. It's basically a frame stretched with um, very fine fabric. Part of the screen is blocked out, so it's almost like a stencil. Okay, you block it out, and wherever there, the block out is not located, that's where the ink is squeegeed through and who is the really the most famous silk screener of our time of course Andy Warhol born in Pittsburgh okay relief prints pay special attention because this is what's gonna happen here these next two weeks these are made by carving into a block and rolling the ink on the surface okay what is carved out is blank and remains the color of whatever paper you're using the ink covers the uncarved the untouched spots relief prints can be carved as you see into wood linoleum or in our case foam very famous Japanese artist he did the great wave Hokusai this is a wood cut okay a little more difficult than carving into foam but completely you know as really here let's look at these ones here this Durer Albrecht Durer German artist he was really German's answer to Leonardo da Vinci this is a woodcut look at this extraordinarily fine detail he got by carving into a block of wood inking the surface running it through a press and what prints is what has remained so all these white areas that you see and all the spaces between the hatching that you see that has all been carved out by Durer oh just take a minute and appreciate this okay what makes this image so incredibly powerful okay if you said that direction of line Okay, these radiating lines that come out of the center, like right where the bridge of this person's nose would be, you are absolutely correct in my opinion. A good print is going to have different direction of line, different line weights, that's a line thickness, okay? It's going to balance your lights and your dark. This is, um, I mean, if you would break this down, it's almost 50-50, isn't it? Maybe 40-60 light to dark, but still... It's a good balance. It's not too dark. It's not too light. Okay. When you do your foam plate print, it should be, um, you should work these plates, you know, more than just a single, you know, uh, consistent line. It should have a different kind of lines, different kind of directions. And textures, of course, can be created by including um, patterns and varying your lines. And that's all we have here. So I hope you enjoyed that um, that presentation. Let's get started here with how to create a foam plate. Thank you very much.